Welcome, this is Dr. Ralph Esposito with Diagnostic Solutions Laboratory, and I'm going to be running you through an introduction. And this is basically a simple explanation of what SNPs, what genes are, what DNA is, the difference between a genotype and a phenotype. It also provides you information as to the location of the uh, SNP, which is based on the RS number that you can see here. And then it also explains to you what the alleles are for that particular SNP. This is just an introduction and it allows the patient and the practitioner to become more familiar with exactly what is going to be expected and reported in this report. Then we have a genetic educational tool and we have the OWL here and this OWL will show up throughout the report. It'll tell you certain new words that may have not showed up before which will educate the patient and provide them information as to what that word means. When we get to that, we'll talk about it a little bit more so it becomes more clear. Now a few caveats. This is a deeper dig into genomics. And what this is going to educate the patient on is the information that we are providing you here is not a death sentence and it is not a diagnosis. What it is, it's nutrigenomics. We are providing you with information based on your genomic data and giving you risk ratios or odd ratios, which can tell you whether your risk for something is increased or decreased. This by no means indicates that the patient will or will not have that condition and may be completely irrelevant to the patient, which is why I emphasize that the report wizard must be tailored to the individual's current history, past medical history, family history, and also their chief complaints. A prime example of this is if you're being told that you're 110% more likely to get struck by lightning, which is an OR of 1.1, that's much, much less distressing when you realize that very few people get struck by lightning and it's a very small difference from the normal. But nonetheless, it is a slight increase in your risk, but does not mean that it will absolutely happen. This is very important to uh, explain to the patient and also important for the practitioner to understand as they go through the report and try to understand uh, what this report means for this particular patient's health history and their risk. As we move down, we look at understanding the report. And as we try to understand the report, this is just an example of what we will see moving forward. So we see here that we have cytochrome 1B1 which is responsible in detoxification. Again, not related to methylation because this is just an example. Now we have the sum of the SNPs, which indicate a homozygous risk, which are the orange. We have the yellow squares, which indicate a lower or heterozygous risk. And then we have the gray squares, which might be just fine or no issues with polymorphisms. And then the green squares, which may actually show some benefit. So we see that here, it's just a visual for the patient to understand. And then below, it'll tell you which exact SNPs are contributing to each one of these. So we see here that this individual example, we have a risk, which is the risk allele. Whether that allele is a benefit, B, the type would be a benefit, or the type would be a risk, would be R. As you can see, B is um, benefit and it's green risk would be orange, which might be a risk. And then it tells you what the actual patient is. So for example, this patient has the AC allele for this particular SNP, which shows benefit, which is why part of the square here is green. Then we have a homozygous. So they have one allele of risk. So the risk allele is G. The patient has one of those alleles. And we can see here, that the magnitude is orange, so it's a uh, risk allele, and you can see that what is what may be filling up the orange squares here. And then we have the heterozygous, which show up as the yellow alleles. And then we have the homozygous here, which is the risk would be the A allele. It is a risk. The patient has both of those, so they're homozygous, which shows up in the orange. So we have the green have no risk, so it's beneficial. They do not have uh, they might show benefit, so those are the green boxes here. Then we have the heterozygous, which 
shows moderate or a uh, lower risk, so that's yellow. And then we have a higher risk, which is the risk allele A, homozygous, and those are the orange boxes here. As we move down, you'll see the beaker here, which will tell you select agents that might be um, I, beneficial or helpful for this particular gene or might have influence on that particular SNP. And then moving on to the multi-SNP macros, what we will see here is that this is what makes Opus 23 Explorer and Genomic Insight very unique, is that it provides you with multiple SNP macros or algorithms that will tell you whether a risk is increased or decreased, not based on one particular SNP, but based on multiple. And this is all recorded in the literature and PubMed. It's, it's something that has been cited and um, reported in any type of peer-reviewed journal. And what we can see here is, take for example, if you have SNP A and you have SNP B, then the risk of condition Z is higher. But an algorithm also will work is if you have SNP A, but you do not have SNP B, then perhaps your risk for condition Z might be a little bit lower. And that is what's very unique to Opus 23 Explorer and Genomic Insight is that we can provide you with more uh, data that can give you more clinical insight and not basically give you a black and white of yes or no, good or bad. And as we go through the program, you'll see exactly what we're discussing here.